Hello and welcome to another time lapse sketching tutorial. Today we will be sketching a rooftop scene using Daniel Smith's Walnut Ink. So this is a tonal study sketch. This is the reference photo I'm using. You can download the photo from the link in the video description below. By the way, this video is the condensed version of the full-length tutorial I have made for my patrons. So if you want to watch the full-length tutorial, consider supporting me on Patreon. This scene is quite detailed and there are many elements. I'm going to draw directly with ink, but before I do that, I have already visualized how the scene is going to look. If you are not confident with using ink directly on paper, you can always use a pencil to mark out the composition or mark out the important elements first. And using pencils to mark out the composition or elements can help you draw more accurately and make less mistakes. So with this sketch, I have already visualized how the scene is going to look. I start by drawing the two rooftops in the foreground, the biggest elements first. Usually when it comes to drawing, I draw the biggest elements first and fill in the details uh, later on, fill in the details within the big shapes later on. And it's important to get the first few lines uh, accurate because if you draw something too big right at the start of your sketch, um, all the other elements that you are going to draw later will have to be drawn bigger because they have to be in proportion to the first few lines or elements that you draw. And it's important to get the perspective accurate at the start of your sketch because if you get the perspective wrong, it's going to affect everything that you draw. So just make sure you get the perspective accurate. However, in this particular sketch, the perspective, um, it's not that obvious because if I'm not wrong, this photo was taken with a telephoto lens, which is why you can see the vertical lines of the buildings. Um, they are vertical, even at the edges of the photo. So due to this perspective uh, from the camera lens, the vanishing point for the buildings that you see, they are actually outside of the scene. So when drawing something like this, uh, you will have to rely a lot on your observation skills. So before you draw anything, you have to compare what you are about to draw with all the other elements that you have already drawn. So for this sketch, I drew the two rooftops uh, in the foreground first. And while drawing, I'm actually comparing all the tiny roofs, the tiny windows, the locations, the positions of those tiny roofs and windows to those rooftops in the foreground. It's so much easier to draw the big elements first and then fill in the details compared to drawing from the left to the right continuously or drawing from the center of the page outwards. So for this sketch, I drew the rooftops in the front first, followed by the big shapes of the buildings and that's followed by the details on the side of the walls. In this case, the windows, uh, the balconies, and after you have drawn the big shapes, you can fill in all those details very easily. And if you have drawn those big shapes wrong, obviously all the elements uh, that are within those big shapes are going to be affected. The fountain pen I'm using is the Pelican M200 fountain pen with sketch ink, if I remember correctly. So I've just drawn the tiles and you can see my lines, they are very, uh, how should I say, loose, are very squiggly. And the sketch is drawn, sorry, the sketch is, the ink sketch is complete. And now I'm going to paint the sketch. So I have added some walnut ink 
Daniel Smith Walnut Ink into the watercolor palette, and I paint with a light wash first. So when you're doing tonal studies, you start with the lighter washes first and just cover everything that is supposed to be that is not white. Cover everything that is not white with this light wash and the subsequent layers uh, you will make them darker and darker you can use gray inks to create quick tonal studies you can also use your own watercolor mixes to create tonal studies if i'm using gray ink i will probably use paints gray i actually have several water brushes filled with uh, noodleless lexington gray inks um, I have one brush with diluted gray ink, one with more concentrated gray ink, and one with the original gray ink. So I don't have to pour the ink into the watercolor palette that you see here. I just use the ink straight from the water brush and it's very convenient. I believe I have made a YouTube video for that. So this is the first wash and now I'm painting the second wash. So all the areas that are lit by light are left paper white. And when I paint the second layer, I am comparing the values to the initial wash. So if something appears to be darker, Compared to the initial wash, I would just paint the second layer on top of it. And I do that for the whole scene again. At this stage, you can see the sketch is coming to life as I paint more details. The more values you add, the more realistic your sketch will look. For this sketch, I'm going to use maybe three, four values, um, a light tone, a darker tone, and something really dark, and maybe black. Um, but in this case, I cannot get black because the walnut ink, I mean the concentrated walnut ink is not going to look as dark compared to black ink. If you take a look at the photo, you can see there are certain areas where it's very dark almost black however it's difficult to paint those dark areas those black areas with one ink because there is a limitation with one ink it just can't get as dark compared to black ink but for this sketch uh, the ink is dark enough so now i'm painting the hill or the mountain behind the buildings um, again painting the hill or the mountain behind painting the background behind creates this uh, illusion of uh, depth foreground and background so we have the roofs in the foreground the buildings in the middle ground and the hill in the background so this makes the scene look more three-dimensional Having overlapping elements in your scene can also make your scene look more three-dimensional. So when I sketch, I will always think about overlapping elements. And now I'm just adding details or textures actually to the sketch. I'm adding some parallel lines to the roofs and little dots to represent texture on the side of the walls, on the roofs. Uh, if there are no textures, uh, the sketch looks too clean. And now I'm using the white gel pen to add more details. I have white over the inks, um, that's light over gray, and I have inks over the paper, so that's dark over light. So you can mix and match different tonal values to create visual interest. This is how the sketch looks. If you want to watch more tutorial, you can check out the many free tutorials that I have from my YouTube playlist or consider supporting me on Patreon. 
Thanks for watching. See you guys again. Bye.